Hi, this is Remembering the Past, the show where we talk about people who've died recently who've had a profound effect on our history, our society, or our culture. Tonight we're going to do a new feature and do an interview with one of the top obit writers in the country, Harrison Smith of the Washington Post. He's part of what is, in my opinion, the best obit staff in North America put together by Adam Bernstein at the Post. And we're going to talk about a great piece Harrison did on Ted Dabney, who died recently at the age of 81. Ted Dabney was the co-founder of Atari. Harrison, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Corey. For those who didn't read your piece or those who are unfamiliar with Ted Dabney, could you tell us a little bit about him and what your approach was to writing about his life? Absolutely. So uh, I guess, uh, full disclosure, I am not old enough to have played Pong, which is this game that he and Atari are most closely associated with, and had no idea who he was uh, when I heard that he had passed away last month. But in essence, Ted Dabney is somebody who helped create uh, probably the most important arcade game company in the world. You know, Atari, when they were created in the early 70s, they were really at the forefront of video games, which was a phrase that hardly existed at the time. They were working from scratch to try and basically use these new fangled devices called computers, which cost tens and tens of thousands of dollars at the time, uh, to have fun at bars and arcades, which I guess didn't really exist at that time, so, so bars, hotels, restaurants, what have you. So uh, Ted, again, he was a co-founder of this company, but he really wasn't uh, a business person, per se. Uh, he was a guy who liked to play around with circuitry uh, and figured out for Atari how to get things to move on a television screen. I'm, I'm sure there's a much better technical description of exactly what Ted did, uh, but sort of the problem of it is it's hard to figure out what he did uh, if you're not in the video game industry or have a background in computing. It's like this weird wizardry in figuring out how to uh, make things move on a screen that obviously aren't there uh, and to do it without these powerful microchips that uh, students at places like MIT were spending a hundred plus thousand dollars uh, to purchase. So essentially he created a whole new game and that became an entire industry, a multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah, the complicated thing about Ted is uh, he, he would have very angrily disagreed with you there. He, he didn't create the game per se. He didn't really want to be that closely associated with it. But in, in a roundabout way, he kind of figured out the founding principles for how to make something like Pong. So he wasn't the person who created that game, who built it, uh, and actually you know, devised the circuitry there. But uh, the guy who did, this gentleman named Alan Alcorn, uh, an engineer at Atari, uh, was working directly on principles that Ted devised. Um, so Ted was uh, kind of the first person to do this, at least with an Atari. There was another guy uh, just two years earlier who independently figured out how to uh, basically make a video game. This was a, a gentleman named Ralph Baer. Uh, he's considered the father of video games. But uh, Ted, again, figured out the circuitry, knew how to make things move on the screen, and that's how we get to Pong. Uh, which is something that one of his colleagues in Atari creates. Have you ever played Pong? I'm just curious. You, you know, they've got, like, demos of Pong on the Internet that you can fiddle around with. <laughs> and I think even on, like, the Nint Nintendo Wii a few years back, you could play this early version of Pong or, a, you know, a look-alike version of it. Well, when we think of Atari, we think about Nolan Bushnell. Can you talk about the relationship between Ted and Nolan Bushnell? Now, you called... Ted, the Steve Wozniak of Atari, and Bushnell, the Steve Jobs. Uh, how, what was their relationship like, and how did it change over time? That, that was actually a, a nice comparison that Leonard Herman, a uh, video game historian, made, uh, in that Ted, like Steve Wozniak, was really the person who figured out how to make the machine work. He did the bulk of the engineering on Atari's first video game, uh, this arcade machine called Computer Space, uh, which is not a catchy game, game name, and it didn't turn out to be a very catchy game. But he and Nolan met at this Silicon Valley company called Ampex. They were 
working on early tape recorders and products that were used by the military and really bonded over the shared love of games. Not video games, but chess and Go, uh, which is popular in China and Japan. Um, started playing these games, and Nolan, I think it's fair to say he, he was far more of a, a business guy. He had this entrepreneurial sensibility in a way that Ted didn't share at all. Um, so Ted would sort of humor him in talking through ideas, which ended up forming the basis of Atari. Um, but Nolan initially wanted to create this pizza parlor. Um, you know, they're, they're sitting together, probably playing chess, maybe playing Go, and uh, throwing out ideas for a business that, you know, turned into Chuck E. Cheese, this pizza parlor with uh, animatronic figures and arcade games for people to play. And Nolan's able to rope Ted in to this scheme, and it seems to be going quite well for a while. I mean, it becomes Atari. They work together to make computer space, that first arcade game. They make Pong. Pong's huge. I mean, that, it's an understatement to say exactly how big that game was. But they really go in, in separate directions shortly after Pong comes out and becomes popular. The way Ted tells it, they just divide it over money. It wasn't something that Ted was really interested in. He, he said he just wanted to make things, to work with circuitry and have a little fun with this this new project they had. So right after Atari gets built and gets going, I think it's in the mid-70s, uh, Ted sells his share in the company, and that's a quarter of a million dollars, and goes on to work for a couple uh, electronics companies in the Valley. Uh, ends up moving to the Sierra Nevada mountains, totally disappears uh, off the grid of the video game world, and uh, honestly, off the, the literal grid as well. Uh, they're in this 300-person town, and he and his wife start a grocery store and, by all accounts, uh, have a, a lovely few years. You know, from what I've read, that's not that unusual for some of these Silicon Valley heroes to just get up and leave sometime. You know, I think most of them made more money than he did because he really didn't make much money, did he? He didn't, no. I think uh, it wasn't something that he expressed much regret about, but it was really that quarter of a million dollars, which... It was definitely a lot more than it is today, but yeah, had he stayed in the company longer or you know maintained a share in Atari, I'm sure that the cash out would have been enormous. Yeah, it sounds like a very interesting guy. Anything else, any other insights into his personality that uh, you can give us, Harrison, before we close? Sure. I think what really stands out to me, and it's kind of hard to realize i think how unusual this is because as you mentioned there are other people in the valley and other entrepreneurs that may come to mind who uh, weren't celebrated in their day or who sold their share in a company early but to start something like atari to play a role in the creation of the most famous arcade game in history pong and then just to disappear uh, for 30 or 40 years it's pretty remarkable and I, you know, I don't want to overly psychologize. It's it's hard to speak exactly to what Ted wanted and what he wanted to do, but I think it's safe to say he just went into this almost as a lark, and it was almost as a lark that he created the multi-billion-dollar industry. Thank you very much, Harrison. That's really interesting, and uh, I look forward to doing this again with you in the future. Happy, happy to. I hope so. Maybe next time uh, I'll be able to meet you out in Chicago. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, that would, be, that would be good for some deep dish pizza. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Harrison, thanks very much. Thanks, Corey. I'm Corey Franklin. I want to thank my IT genius and producer, Sid Tapps, and that was Harrison Smith of the Washington Post Obit section on Ted Dabney, co-founder of Atari, who's died at age 81.